Mm-hmm. So what is this telling you? Smooch, smooch. No, I think it's saying that old people are scary. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. And I'm Carly Bird. Week 22. Week 22. And I want to say that I really apologize for last week, everyone. Um, We were going to do a live stream, kind of like a celebration of us getting to 2000. And um, apparently the video we were watching was incorrect. YouTube was very mad at us. So we were unable to do it. It shut us down very quickly. Their algorithm flagged us and shut down our whole podcast stream that we were doing and we were unable to record it and then upload it onto stitcher and all of those platforms yeah so um we had to miss next week plus because we were not feeling well either um i'm feeling a little bit better now and carly's uh she's a hell of a trooper she's taking tons of drugs to be able to do what she's doing today uh so huge shout out carly thank you thank you i'm here um but we wanted to try to do another live stream again but this time unlike last unlike our last attempt where we were reacting to a video, uh, we're actually going to follow our old style of storytelling. Um, But we get to do it with an audience now. Listen to you guys react to what we're doing, being able to watch as we do it. Maybe you have some questions for us uh, as Carly tells a story. Uh, But but since Carly is telling the story tonight. First, we need to ask the big question of the night. Tom, what are we drinking tonight? Well, that's so weird when you say it, and because I'm usually the one that actually says it, so it's a, it's a little it's a little awkward. Um, we are drinking. You know, I just had the freaking name up when no, you, you said that. No, no, you we are jo- uh, can, we are joking. Can I have the, can I have the glass? <laughs> ah, we are drinking Old Smoky Tennessee moonshine um you can buy this at any abc store in virginia or wherever you buy your spirits um because of the type of story we're, we're doing today i really thought maybe going with that like a moonshine thing kind of went down with with ghosts in the holler sort of thing um you can get it in multiple flavors cherry cinnamon apple and flavors that are moonshine <laughs> okay tom so mm, it is tastes like moonshine that one's more citrusy it's more like citrusy. orange flavor. We had a very dear friend um, discover our podcast on Facebook, I believe it was, Carol Ann. And um, she messaged us and was like, I did not realize this podcast belonged to the two of you, but I have a ghost story I have to share with you guys. So she called us up one night and she gave us, you know, all of the details And we were like, please make this a story. Write it down for us so that we can then read it on our podcast. She did. And um, we're going to read it for everybody tonight. So I'm super excited about it. I think it's a great story. Yeah. It's a real ghost sighting. Yeah. I can't wait to get into it. And then we'll have like some news and announcements. um, (coughs) Kind of like what our plan is going forward with everything. Um, It won't be too much because happy new year, by the way, guys. Happy new year to everyone. Um, But Carly. So yeah. What is the story that we're going to have this evening? All right. Our story written by our dear friend, Carol Ann O'Connor. It's called The Tale of the Spirit Hiker. Ooh. Yes. It was a warm day with sunshine and still air in the late spring of 2020. So this happened recently. My friend Krista and I met down at the field parking area of Slate Lick in George, Washington National Forest for our weekly Friday trail ride with our ponies, Puck and Simon. With the COVID-19 virus causing so much illness and stress at work, we enjoyed these weekly outings to catch up and chat with each other. It felt good just to have real contact doing something fun with someone else after a long week. As usual, we both brought our dogs with us to our ride. Do you think JoJo would actually, like to the people that are listening in right now, how many of you could actually take your dog hiking with you off leash right now and no one would die and your dog would stay with you? How about take a a, a dog with you for a trail ride and it not get trampled by your pony? Which I did take JoJo on a trail ride by accident one time. We weren't able to use the uh, arena that was nearby because it was already booked and we didn't realize it. And Mm -hmm. I drove like over an hour to get there and Every, the group that we met up with was just like, let's just go on a trail ride. And I was like, well, I brought my dog because I was just going to tie him to the fence. Yeah. So I ended up taking JoJo along. He did great. 
Really? Yeah. So I know that Jojo can do it, and I'd love to take him back. So it, with with it just being like me and you and Jojo. Realize but, I like shaking the tree. Yeah, you shake the whole table. <laughs> um, but I, but I don't know how he would do with other dogs. Like if mm-hmm. it was just like him and another dog on the trail, I feel like he'd be too busy running laps around us trying to get the other dog to play with him that it might not work out so great yeah i think kirby would have been done pretty good with that too oh yeah i actually trained him to do it he would have been perfect i'm sorry tom got me all off on a tangent all right we started out down the fire road the dog circled us excitedly which i'm sure jojo would do my pony puck was puffing up and snorting at every turn down the lane the vegetation on the side of the road always left him imagining the worst was hiding behind it We picked up a trot, laughing at our conversation and company. Chris's pony, Simon, was shaking his head and threatening to buck, which was always comical because his thick build and generally quiet attitude gets shelved when we start down the trail. That is hilarious. I can see Simon doing that, Mm -hmm. getting all frisky. We trotted past a campsite and over the gigantic culvert bridge with ponies edging each other on their on their silliness we soon came upon an intersection in the rough dirt road we took a left towards hog pin lane and quickly made the decision to do my favorite loop a 10 mile ride near buck lick mountain okay so we gotta talk about the names so today's sponsor is a moonshine company and with names like butt L- butt lick mountain <laughs> butt, lick. butt lick mountain and what was the other one Slate Lick. With Slate Lick and Butt Lick Mountain right there, you know the moonshine's going to be good down that holler. It's Buck Lick. No, I thought you said Butt Lick. You said Butt Lick. Buck or Butt? It's Buck, like a deer. Oh, like Buck Lick. Yes! Okay. <laughs> good lord. I am my mother's son. Mm-hmm. I am my mother's son. As whole. Um, all right, you got me off again. Okay, here we go. Is the, that a trout? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> the ponies felt brisk as we passed several more campsites on our left. Puck spooked, jumping to the right as we passed by a section of the road that had eroded away, falling sharply off the hill on our left. The conversation continued all the way down the creek crossing. After fording the creek, we passed by the gate that closed the dirt road to vehicles, making sure that we didn't smack our legs on the narrow passage by the gate. Mm-hmm. The next section of the road was all uphill, snaking up the mountain. We let our ponies take off from for a nice canter to an all-out gallop up the hill, racing each other and generally getting out any silly energy that the ponies were holding onto until that point. At the top of the hill, we pulled up to a walk and started the descent down the other side to Hogpin Pond, looking for any interesting plants or animals along the way. Well, with a name like Hogpin, we know it's going to be there. <laughs> the ponies were able to catch their breaths and settle. I don't think that they saw any hogs, Tom. <laughs> um, after the creek, a section of meadow stretched before us. We picked up a trot, chatting about this and that as we followed a deer path over the field. The path meandered past a random tree here and there, and the grass was knee-high over the field. The sky was blue and inviting. Both horses had found a rhythm by now, their earlier silliness replaced with resolute forward motion. The business of the mount oh sorry the who busy- wrote this this is really well written i know it's like shakespearean we need to get her to edit all the stories that we read before we actually read them for our podcast the busyness of the mountain trail before them we would be going over the stream again then heading up into some rough country to get up on the mountain ridge to circle back around Hogpen. We always try to keep our speed up to at least a trot on these low areas, as you can only travel at a walk once you hit the mountain. I'm mm-hmm. distracted by you. As we popped around a tree, we were coming upon the section to cross back over the stream. The terrain goes from meadow into a grove of trees, then down over the stream into the woods. About 100 feet from the woods, I noticed a hiker, something we have never seen in this part of the forest. I yelled back to Krista, where, hiker? Just then, Puck hit the brakes hard. We were about 75 feet away, and he quickly spun around, trying to run back down the trail, which we had just traveled over. Krista's pony also stopped. Her dog growled and barked. I spun Puck back towards the hiker with a hard left rein and left leg. He quickly turned around, ears alert, snorting, not wanting to move forward. 
At this point, I noticed some of the details of the hiker. He had on a light blue long sleeve plaid shirt and suspenders with gray trousers. His hat was unusual, reminding me of the traveling bowler hat in the Sound of Music movie. He didn't say anything, and the details of his face were not clear to me. There was something odd, something not right about his appearance. Great question. So basically, um, I don't have the money yet to have a mixing board, Carol Ann. <laughs> um, so once I get a mixing board, I'll be able to put scary music on the live streams. Uh, but because this all gets put... Uh, on one file basically it means once we're done with the live stream all i have to do is throw it in adobe premiere put the music underneath and boom it's good to go overlay it yeah i have to overlay it but when we do a normal stream i have to take three different cameras download all that footage and the audio which is two different audio files download all that sync it edit it put it together doing it this way it's all done all i have to now do is add the music and it's good to go so after the live stream, it'll be redone. And so it'll be in podcast format with the music and it'll also the music for the YouTube version. I know. I asked him the same thing. I was majorly disappointed. I was like, come on, Tom, you got to get get your shit together. Well, again, it's a live stream version. So <laughs> it's like it's more of just it's fun. To, I like I really enjoy right. interacting with people when we do this. Yeah, I think it's because like the fishing the DMV thing. I'm really I, I enjoy that, Carol Ann. So this is one way to do it, and then it'll be uploaded tomorrow the same way. So mm -hmm. if we do live streams, it'll be like a Tuesday, Wednesday. So we would have it available to go out normally on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So. Um, he didn't say anything, and the details of his face were not clear to me. There was something odd, something not right about his appearance. He looked somewhat radiant, as if he had a slight white light coming from him. I spurred my pony forward. Just then, the hiker stepped to his right off the trail as if to give us a wide berth. He bent over and then was gone. Wait, what? We moved forward, Puck jigging and snorting, his neck high and his body tense, ready to take flight if given the opportunity. Krista's dog bounced forward while mine stayed with me. Krista kept her pony in line behind Puck on the narrow grassy trail. Puck just wanted to run away and i was spurring him forward trying to keep his energy moving towards the stream in a stop and start jerky fashion mm -hmm. knowing that he got turned around knowing that if he got turned around he would be running away yeah 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 that's 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 pretty <laughs> scary just as we entered the woods where the hiker had been standing a gust of wind absolutely blew out of the woods, rushing past us. My neck felt chilled. Mm. We went down the bank towards the stream, and I was anxiously looking left and right, trying to find our hiker, knowing that if he said anything or popped up anywhere, my horse was going to jump out of his skin. Yeah, like, and that's something else for our viewers that don't know anything about equine. Um, horses, once they get very skittish, if you are a hiker or a biker, cough, cough, W no trail, which some of those bikers can be absolute dicks, oh, yeah. but they blast past you. It's yeah, like if a horse is like all uptight mm -hmm. and then you like rush past them or something, it can be very dangerous for the person that's, you know, on top of the animal. Right. So I completely see what Carol Ann's saying right, right there. Like you're, you're, you're looking cause you're like trying to like be able to calm the horse down. The only way you calm the horse down is like, if you're not freaking out because the person's right, you have to be you. prepared. You have to know what's coming. Yeah. But if you can't see it coming, then you don't know like which way your horse is going to like jump mm -hmm. and then you get left behind. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it can get gnarly. Right. The trees swayed with cold air rushing. The temperature dropped roughly 20 degrees from the field. We crossed the water, Krista's dog searching all around, looking for something, but not finding anyone. I was looking for any hiding place, nothing. The trees were not thick enough to hide someone and there were no caves or crevices here. Where did he go? We crossed the water, and when both of us hit the other side, I picked up a trot to get across the section of the woods and out to the other side, letting my pony's energy go. What does that mean? <coughs> letting the pony's energy go. He has, he has to get his wiggles out. So oh, so stops being all jiggy. you're basically letting him let him go. Just like let him run and kind of wear himself out for a little while. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. When we had cleared the woods, I looked at Krista. We were both we are both middle-aged adults, not prone to wild, off-landish ideas. 
I hesitated before posing the question. Do you know what we just saw? Yeah, she said, a ghost. <laughs> we both looked at each other. The temperature had warmed up again and the wind was gone. Yep, let's go. That day was not easily forgotten. We have been back many times through the trail. The first time back, I kept a video on my cell phone running just in case, but we have never seen our hiker again. We have only, we have also searched for any places that he could have possibly gone, but there isn't a hiding place in which someone could have disappeared so quickly. It is not forgotten that our animals also displayed attention to this man. So he was not just in our collective imaginations. Mm -hmm. As Krista later pointed out, he was not dressed for the weather. I had her describe what she saw to me immediately after our experience, just to make sure we saw the same thing. The only difference in her description was that she thought he may have had backpack straps wrinkling his blue plaid shirt, while I thought he had suspenders. We both could not remember any facial features other than the slight radiance of light. We both agreed that the cold air that blew out of those woods will forever haunt us as the telltale sign of the spirit hiker. Oof. Wow. Okay, so let's break that down. First off, uh, Carol Ann, if you're listening right now, that is a really good story. Um, yeah, there's something about it when you put animals into it, and we've had other stories like this in the past, right. where if it's like your dog, or in this case, your horse, or and your horse and your dog. Like you're not the only one that feels spooked. But yeah. an animal the animals that feels spooked. and the wildlife around you also feel spooked. Like you had mentioned before, when the wildlife stops making noise. Yes, when, when, the, outside, when the forest goes dead. Right, when the forest goes dead or a wind picks up or something, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden, like, that's where it really gets creepy because the wildlife out there, like, knows that something else is going on. Yeah. <laughs> it's really crazy because, like, it, it it hits something in the back of your head, I think, like, like when you're sitting on top of an animal, like, like, like a horse, or hopefully a horse, I don't know what else you'd be sitting on top of. A cow. When you're sitting on top of your alpaca going for a nice <laughs> little jot, but it, you can feel, like, you can, like, in your loins, you can feel that you can feel yeah, their the stress thing. and their energy. <laughs> We're a little sick. <laughs> you can feel in their loins. I mean, you can feel in <laughs> Tom's got his hand up there. You can feel in their stress. I feel stress. <laughs> you can feel moonshine's hitting. Um, you can you can feel their energy and when it changes. I mean, you can feel when an animal's really scared. Like they don't hide that. Like a child, like right. they don't hide that stuff like right. an adult game. And so when a dog or a horse gets really freaked out, I think that that just adds to my anxiety too. It's like, if you're freaking out, like if I'm like at night, I don't care if it's Jojo, Kirby or any other dog. Oh my. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Um, it doesn't matter w what it is, what other dog it is. If, if I'm like walking a dog at night and its hair pricks up and just has that low growl, I'm I'm not like I'm getting oh, out of there. Yeah, I'm not being brave. I'm, I'm be looking like, for the what exit. What is it, Jojo? No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking like, for the exit. We're going home, Jojo. <laughs> Bless yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> See, I'm nervous. It's in my loins. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> but um, yeah, and the fact that like they both saw him, so there's confirmation there. Right. And the cold wind, that is really freaky. Right. That's one of the creepiest parts. Like too. When, when we've had our ghost encounters before. It's always like that. Like there's that cold wind and, and let us know in the comments, um, either in the live stream or mom, I love you so much. She's talking about the time when I was younger. Um, they cornered me next to a dumpster and they made me look into a dumpster and a raccoon cornered you. The raccoons. I was, I was night fishing when I was a wee child and by in, yourself in Key Largo. No, I think my mom was there too. And okay, well now everyone wants to hear the story. Okay, so yep, let's hear the raccoon story. So the comment here, the for ghost the raccoon viewers that can't see it, is Tom's mom said you run from raccoons. So now Tom's gonna tell us the haunted raccoon story. When I was but a lad hmm. in in Key Largo, which is a key in the Florida Keys, which is in Florida. Um, cool. I was we were night fishing off of this small little concrete jetty. And at the, at the base of the jetty, before you go out there, there was a dumpster uh -huh. and some trees and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. So we went all the way out there and we were, we were fishing. And then at the base of this jetty that went out there, there were some rocks and some debris and stuff. And there were, there were a couple of gentlemen before the sun went down that were actually fishing there. 
And little did we know that they actually dumped some of their their trash, their fish kills and stuff like that, their fish guts yeah. on the rocks there. Didn't uh-huh. know that. Well, some raccoons were out there eating. <laughs> and they were just eating, but they were below that lip. So we couldn't actually see them. Oh, okay. Well, we jot halfway down this jetty at that night and we had this really cool glow in the dark light it was massive i, I bought it i think i bought it or my, my dad probably you bought a it a giant glow stick <laughs> but you put it in the water oh cool and so you and we had a 12 volt battery and so we took this down there you throw it in the water and it lights up a massive probably like the base of this room so probably about i don't know a a it's pretty cool because the water 20 so by 20 down yeah there. yeah but it's dark well <laughs> We're looking over the side, and after time, like all the little baits come in, everything comes in, and then I'm trying to, I have to like sneeze, but I don't need to sneeze right now, which is really weird. But, um, anyway, so like one of my eyes, like shutting because, like, I know I have a sneeze coming on, but it's like it's not wanting to come. So, (laughs) thanks, COVID. (laughs) Yeah. So, anyway, could you go grab that paper towel? I keep talking to the camera. That'd be great. Sure. But, yeah. So, as this is happening and we're looking at all these little fish, some big tarpon and some sharks actually come to this eerie glowing light and you can see them all just like swimming around. And I'm getting nervous like because it's like it's eerie. Well, I go to the end of the jetty and as I turn to go to the jetty, a raccoon's head pops up over the thing and I have a headlight on, but I have like one of those red light ones. So that way I don't like lose my night vision. And as I, as his head pops, my head turns, I see these two beady eyes and I literally drop everything and I haul ass. And I was a fat little kid and I was running like a four, four. It was just one raccoon. Yeah, it was just one raccoon. But I literally dropped everything, screamed and hauled ass the other way. Is, is that why Tom, you, um, ran over that raccoon one night with your car? We're not going to talk about the raccoon. I killed it. I love all animals. Let's just say that. Don't blow into the microphone. Thank you, Caroline. We really appreciate that. Anyway, so that was the story of the ghost raccoon. Well, I got chased by a raccoon, too. When did you get chased by a raccoon? Um, How'd this become the raccoon show? I don't know, but I feel like um, we're bonding over this moment. <laughs> <laughs> Shared moments. Uh, so my raccoon experience happened in like 2013. And um, I was leaving my workplace, which was the um, the hospital, the physical therapy place in Hagerstown. And um, I was an indoor lifeguard there for their therapy mm-hmm. uh, pool. And I had on shorts, of course, because I was lifeguarding, even though it was kind of like the fall. So technically it was pants weather, but I had on shorts anyway, because it's kind of just a short little jaunt from the front of the building down to where we park our cars and um i was walking through the parking lot and then i had to cross like this street and off to the left was just kind of this wooded area that was kind of under construction though because you could tell they were planning on building like more hospital buildings and Mm -hmm. things and literally i get halfway across the street out of the woods comes this mangy raccoon and it locked its eyes on me holy shit really just it's like hobbling towards me you can tell it's foaming from the mouth it's got rabies it's nasty this thing was massive okay and i just like slowly start to back up and i'm like is this thing really chasing me right now or is it just like kind of just running across the road no it was straight up chasing me all I needed to do was turn around and get back inside. So I'm like jogging and the faster I go, the faster this sucker goes with me, Holy chasing shit. me through the parking lot. People are sticking their heads out the window telling me to run. <laughs> Running. They're like, run, run, it's going to get you. Next thing I know, it disappears. I can't figure out where it went. Is it in front of me? Is it to the right, to the left? I don't know. So then I'm just like, well, screw it. I'm just going to run inside. So I run inside through two, like, automatic doors, okay? Like, I can't even close the door if this raccoon tries to chase me and get into the building. This rabies-infested raccoon. He sees me go inside, runs up to the automatic doors, and just sits there and stares at me. 
through the automatic doors. And I'm thinking, people are going in and out constantly. The doors are constantly opening and closing. He could just come in and get me. And like, people are walking around outside behind him. He doesn't care. He's locked on me. Really? Yeah. I what did saying, you do? I don't know. What so, did you say to him? I didn't. And what I had thought previously was like, well, if I had pants on, I would have been okay with like kicking him and just being like, get out. Like if he got a little closer, you know, it just be like, like a little bunt. And so I could get to my car or whatever. But no, I had on like shorts so he could get straight to my flesh, which is what I was worried about getting rabies. Mm -hmm. But um, I waited there for like five minutes and he finally kind of like hobbled off down. Uh, what the hell is this? It's him, hobble? literally. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like stumbling. I swear he like died later that night from rabies because he was just like out of his mind. Because it's daytime. Mm -hmm. He's not even getting close to nighttime. Like it's mid afternoon. So he literally just like hobbled off through the bushes. And I took that opportunity to get to my car and get the hell out of there. You know, I completely forgot about this story. What story? That's the story you just told. I completely I told forgot. you about that? I, I, I feel like you did. Oh. I feel it was like one of our first date stories. Yeah. My mom actually killed a, killed an animal. She kicked an animal to death uh, when she was younger, too. So you guys have that in common, which is, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. The raccoon story got me excited. Was this in Loudoun County? Was no, I told you it was Hagerstown. Oh, Hagerstown. That makes sense, actually. Never yeah. mind. I'm sorry. Yeah. That seems like a very Hager sounding thing. So why they were you upset about the whole sport here? And then we will have a Patreon up and ready by February. Everybody Patreon is going to be up and ready by February. Um, we are working. Carly and I Does are that working mean merch. It means merch. I'm trying to figure out what our first merch is going to be like. We are thinking about voting on it. Yeah. We the we're either going to do a t-shirt or we're going to do a little plushy toy of our Wendigo. Please let us know out of. The four people that are viewing right now, let us know what merch you would be most yeah. interested in. T-shirt, beanie, or a plush toy of a Wendigo. It's going to be a cute Wendigo. So it's going to be a cute little goat man um, versus like a scary. I thing. still am not super hyped for that plush toy. A cute little goat T-shirt. Caroline says T-shirt. Okay. So should it have some of our favorite quotes of the night like uh, French Frenchman or... Don't be a Derek. Don't be a Derek. Ooh, don't be a Derek is a good one. Yeah. That would be a really good one. Yeah. Um, is that a trout? No, that is not even the same podcast. <laughs> it's still a good one. Okay. I still love that one. Anyway, um, and then the last last bit of uh, news and notes is we have a new segment that we're going to be doing every week. And what that new segment is, is we find a scary story that happened online, one okay. of us, and we get to share it with the world. So that's not that what we're already doing. Mm -mm, like a scary news story, something that's in the news. news. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for mine? Carl Oshnink, Carl Oshnink, this guy's name, uh, was rescued a week ago, which is the West coast of Australia. When he was part of a scuba diving in, uh, tour, okay. when the boat left him. Oh, no. And he actually spent 24 hours floating what? adrift in the ocean before a rescue boat actually found Could him. Could he sue them for leaving him behind? So he has a GoPro video <laughs> because he thought he was going to die yeah. that he actually recorded his last will and testament because he was so terrified that he was going to get eaten or die. Yeah. And he was lucky enough to actually be found. Save the best for last. <laughs> That was absolutely terrifying. I would want to show it to you guys, but I think we get in trouble. But yeah. it is, I watched this video. I'm going to okay. show it to you. Oh my God. I <laughs> could not sleep the other day when I like, I watched it. Cause it's just like, so like raw. Cause like it's his GoPro thing uh, yeah. of him. Like saying like, yeah, I'm like, he's out in the I'm, middle of the ocean. I'm bobbing. Right. And the idea like, it miles was like, and miles and miles away. It was away getting from dark land. out. That was a oh. thing. Cause he's like, it's getting dark out. I'm not going to see. And he's crying. He's like, right. I love you guys. I love, I love my wife, blah, blah, blah. And luckily a boat found him. But like he had to spend a night floating adrift in the ocean. Hell no. No. Could not do that. No. I really don't know if I could die of fear, but that would put me to the test whether I'd die of fear or not. Yeah. That's not ghost related, but scary shit in the news. Heart attack city. That's scary shit in the news. Yeah. And next week, Carly is going to be finding something that we would consider scary shit in the news. Wish me luck. Yes. This is the first I'm hearing about it. 
yeah, I think it'd be a neat little segment, just a cute little thing to end it with. Um, so would you guys rather use a Ouija board one time or float adrift in the ocean all night? Ooh. Let us know in the comment sections. Uh, we'll be posting that question on our Facebook page. Would you rather still might float in the ocean? Float adrift? No, no fucking way. No, 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 no. Okay, but having to fight off like living creatures you don't die versus the spiritual realm you don't die i don't die you don't die it was like no, shark isn't gonna eat you okay but it's still like that mental thing like i can tell you shark's not gonna eat you but you're still f like floating and dealing with all that and something like brushes up against your leg i mean it'd be horrifying but like i said we are not inviting demons into our house oh my god so you'd rather deal with oh i you <laughs> i'd rather talk to baphomet then have to deal with that. If anything touches my foot, I'm going to poop myself and then just die. Could not do that. I could probably fall asleep in the ocean. At night? Yeah. Bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. There's no way you could. If I had on a life jacket. You would not fall asleep at night. I probably could. No, I don't think you could. Really? Yeah. Does that not scare you at all? No, it's horrifying. But also, like, I sleep when I'm stressed. So That is a terrible mechanism. <laughs> I good for you, Carl. <laughs> what it what it <laughs> Carol Ann said no guarantee you won't get eaten. <laughs> no, it's it's my hypothetical. Right, 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 right. What it and then uh Linda said good for you, Carly. Thank you. And then Bird Larry said no wiggy board. <laughs> <laughs> So let's just make sure we understand this. <laughs> people would rather do Robert the doll or their in-laws than the Ouija board. Yes. And people would rather float all night in the ocean yes. than a Ouija board. Yes. I really think we got to really deal with our priorities right now as, as a culture. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't think that Ouija board is as dangerous as floating at night in the ocean. Can all of you have a... No, that is scarier than a damn board. It's a board. There is no way... I would pick the board all day versus floating at night in the tropical ocean. Yeah, but once you open up that spiritual realm, you can't just cast them back away. How do you know? Have you done it? I don't need to do it to know. How about this? Everyone. My has... grandma said. Oh, but, but millions of people have used a Ouija board and have been okay. There's a 50-50 shot of the people that have gone and floated in the ocean and aren't coming back. rare it's it's uh, 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 just rare that people like you know how many people get in the ocean every single day yeah you know how many people use a ouija board a few yeah i'm just saying i'm just saying anyway so everybody wait what did caroline say ouija is such a weird spelling <laughs> you were linda wrong, said you're wrong thomas i missed what that was about um Probably about the Ouija boards being like no biggie. Thank you, Carly. Thank you. They are not. They are not okay spiritually when using the Ouija board. Okay, I might. I understand your soul, but my flesh is a problem when I'm getting gnawed on it. <clears throat> like I don't know. Like is uh, getting eaten by he view on Ouija? What his view on the Ouija board? I, you know what? I'm going to keep trying this. Eventually, I'm going to figure out a scenario where people are going to say Ouija board is is safer than because right now you guys are saying the Ouija board is safer than the cursed doll or spending time with your in-laws. The Ouija board is safer than no, no, floating no, adrift in the ocean. No, it's the opposite. Wait, you're right. It's the you're opposite. Completely I am exhausted. So on that, if you are on. You're in the middle of the ocean, bigger critters out there. Exactly. That's why I would pick the Ouija board. Caroline, what would you choose? Caroline, let us know. Would you rather pick the Ouija board or float in the ocean? Yeah. Thomas, Satan is real. So is a great white shark. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to cause you more physical damage? The great white shark or Satan? <laughs> <laughs> or a jellyfish. You know, you got like a lot of jellyfish. Oh, yeah. Those things are gnarly. Would you rather have to float through a sea of jellyfish? Or have to use a Ouija board. I'm just saying it should be closer than it is. But everyone apparently is like, nope, Ouija board is still worse. Fine, fine, fine. It is because it's, I, I will it's lose that this one. gift that keeps on giving. 
And speaking of gifts that keep on giving, I believe Caroline's going with the Ouija board. Team Ouija board. There we go. Ouija board is what is not as bad as floating at night in the ocean. All right. You Thank all you. can do the Ouija together in Caroline's basement. Amen. And with, and with that, guys, I think it's time to end. So this was week 22 of Spirits and Ghost Stories. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of this live stream. It, I, Carly, I really enjoy interacting with people. It's a lot of fun doing it like mm-hmm. this. Um, hopefully everyone else enjoys it too. It won't be all the time, but we'll definitely, nope. Carolyn's <laughs> <laughs> like, I hate it. She's <laughs> like, no, he can't come to my house and do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So with that, I think it's time to bid everyone With that bombshell. It's time to end. My name is Thomas Aarons. I'm Carly Bird. We'll see you guys next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. Good night. Bye. Oh, I punched a wall. God bless it. Oh, Lord, that hurt so much. The whole house just shook. Oh, Lord, that hurt. All right. um, Okay, anyway. So we're going to just...
me and dad. Oh, wait, who's me and dad? Well, that oh, would be got Bird it. Larry. Oh, oh, Penny is, okay, got it. It's Penny on, on your dad's account. Yep. That's why me and dad makes, okay, cool. Yep. It sounds like he doesn't have grammar. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was the tale. So what'd you think of it? Um, I think that that creepy old lady was um really wow that was intense we had a huge conversation about a <laughs> raccoon um about horses about jojo and then a scary old lady linda very good she was coming out to get lala i know the only thing about this story was like the names like maria lala is what he called is what she called him. Okay. His name's Adam. So I don't know why you call him Lala. That I feels like a terrible why. nickname. I didn't just stick with Adam because e- it got confusing. At first, I thought there were three people, and then it was only one, two people. Yeah, like I, I don't know. I think what's creepy about that, though, again, it's like it's someone being stalked. And again, if you see a creepy old person, you know, huge shout out to all the people that are over fifty in the chat right now. If you see a creepy old person in the middle of the forest, fucking run. Yeah. I think that's the biggest Get lesson here. Them. There was an old person when when a certain Carol Ann was out there, and there's an old person that destroyed a married couple because you know they were going on a schmoochy smooch, and then he was going to propose. 